As we head into the 2024 college football season, the landscape of college football quarterbacks are really changing, and the SEC Conference quarterbacks have some very interesting narratives heading into next season. We have a decent amount of returning starting quarterbacks in the SEC, but a lot of these quarterbacks have interesting stories. For example, Jalen Murrow will now have to play under Kalen DeBoer's system at Alabama after the Nick Saban retirement. We have new top faces in the SEC like Quinn Ewers for Texas. We also have quarterbacks with a lot to prove like a Peyton Thorne. But the thing that I am most excited for is to see the new quarterback stepping up and starting for the first time in their college careers. Transfer portal quarterback Brock Vandergriff is a very interesting transfer portal quarterback and I'm excited to see what he can do for Kentucky. Carter Wigman isn't necessarily a new face for Texas A&M, but I'm interested to see what he can do if he stays healthy because he has so much potential for Texas A&M. Garrett Nussmeyer and Nico Iamaliava have potential written all over them as well, and I already made a video hyping up Nico Iamaliava, so feel free to go check out that video, the link is in the description below. But one quarterback I certainly cannot ignore heading into next season is Jackson Arnold for the Oklahoma Sooners. And today I wanted to talk about what the future looks like for Jackson Arnold and this Oklahoma team as a whole. But as always, before we get into the video, let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But anyways, without further ado... Let's get into the video. Jackson Arnold was one of the top quarterbacks in the class of 2023. He is a five-star recruit who was a top eight national recruit and top four quarterback in the class of 2023. ESPN actually had him as the number one quarterback, but this is what Jackson Arnold's on three scouting report says about him. Tough live-armed quarterback who quickly rose to be the top 23 signal caller in Texas. Looks like the most ready to play quarterback in the 2023 cycle. Plays for one of the top high school programs in the Dallas Metroplex and led his team to the state title game as a junior in a deep playoff run as a senior. The most productive five-star quarterback in 2023, while also facing the toughest competition of the group. Plays in a spread ISO offenses game that heavily utilizes play-action downfield passes and power running between the tackles. Flashes a quick release in cams and Friday night settings. Shows a strong arm with the ability to generate velocity on intermediate and downfield throws. A light-footed athlete who consistently escapes pressure and makes plays out of the pocket. One of the tougher top quarterbacks in the 2023 cycle. Carrying a considerable rushing load. A physical rudder who embraces contact. Has the speed to pull away at the second level. Backed up a very productive senior season with a strong showing at the under All-American game. Does not have the stature of some other top quarterbacks at under 6'1 and around 200 pounds. But has a relatively big frame at his height. Also doubled as a top baseball player before turning his focus to football. And yes, Jackson Arnold definitely has so much potential. He will be heading into his sophomore season for Oklahoma next season. He started in one game for Oklahoma last season when they played Arizona in the Alamo Bowl. He also had an impressive showing against Arkansas State when he went 11 for 11, which was mainly just on short check down passes, but he also ran the ball pretty well and showed his toughness in that game. But in his first start against Arizona, he wasn't perfect. He had some bad throws and threw multiple interceptions. He was playing against a solid Arizona defense. And it definitely was a bigger type of stage for Jackson Arnold. And he had to face some adversity in that game. But he really didn't have a bad game either. He also threw for 361 yards and two touchdowns. He had a lot of mistakes in that game. But he now has a full offseason of spring practices. And he knows that he is that number one guy for this team going forward. He does have potential to make a lot of noise in the SEC as soon as next season. Because not only can he get rid of the ball quick and make good throws, but he is very dangerous with his legs and he should be one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the SEC. Jackson Arnold just needs to stay consistent and take what the defense gives him. But imagine if he steps up and surprises a lot of people. And if he cuts down on the mistakes and makes more consistent deeper throws. Because he has a lot of potential and we've seen spark from Jackson Arnold. He does have great ability to roll out of the pocket and make off balance throws. He had some impressive throws to Nick Anderson in that bowl game against Arizona. He also had a perfectly placed deep throw to Brennan Thompson. And like I said, it wasn't a perfect performance. But if you look past the mistakes, you know this kid has all the talent to be one of the top quarterbacks in the SEC. And he isn't afraid to take his shots down the field. And he's only going to get better from here on out. And I am excited to see what he can do for Oklahoma the next couple of seasons. I think this Oklahoma team has so much potential as a whole. A lot of people are expecting them to take a step down record-wise because the SEC is going to be a gauntlet. 
and they have a very brutal schedule. And if I'm being honest, I don't know if I'm quite ready to consider this team a top contender for the SEC championship quite yet because I do think they have some question marks heading into next season. They will have a completely revamped offensive line, which is my number one concern for this team right now. Losing Caden Green to the transfer portal was a big loss. They did pick up four three-star offensive linemen in the transfer portal though, but the offensive line is definitely a concern to me, and I don't necessarily think it's going to be bad, but I don't know if it will be at the level to battle up front with the best defensive front sevens in the SEC. But one thing you cannot take away from Oklahoma is their underrated receiving core. They have a stacked receiving core that honestly does not get talked about enough, and that's really going to help out Jackson Arnold as he continues to develop. I know they don't return their number one receiver, Jake Stoops, but they do return Nick Anderson, who is going to be a beast in the receiving core for this team. And he actually has massive upside because last season he was only a freshman and he was the number two receiver for this team. And I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Anderson got in that 1,000 receiving yard range and he already showed some early chemistry with Jackson Arnold in the Alamo Bowl against Arizona. Not only does Oklahoma return Nick Anderson, but they return Jaleel Farouk, Andrew Anthony, Jaden Gibson, and Brennan Thompson, and they all had 240 plus receiving yards last season. And this receiving core is very deep from top to bottom. But the cherry on top for this receiving core may just be four-star Purdue transfer Dion Burks, who could potentially start for this team. He was one of the most explosive players in the transfer portal. He was the leading receiver for Purdue with over 600 yards last season. He didn't have crazy stats for Purdue, but Purdue was not that great anyways. But don't be surprised if Dion Burks becomes that number one or number two target for Jackson Arnold next season. Oklahoma also returns their leading rusher from last season, Gavin Sawchuk, who was only a freshman last season. And despite having concerns on the offensive line, I do expect him to do great things in 2024. And this offense as a whole has so much potential. And the thing that makes this team scary is their potential on defense with Brent Venables as head coach. Brent Venables was one of the top defensive coordinators in the country during his time at Clemson from 2012 to 2017. And during that time, he was the defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. But of course, before Clemson, he was the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma from 2004 to 2011. Brent Venables is no stranger to defense, and he is also no stranger to big stages, as in 2015 and 2016. He was a big part of that Clemson team that made it to back-to-back national championships, and he was the defensive coordinator for that stacked Clemson defense, and that alone says a lot of great things about Brent Venables, and I think he has potential to do incredible things in the long run for this Oklahoma team. And Brent Venables is also no stranger to this Oklahoma team because of his time over a decade ago being the Oklahoma defensive coordinator. I don't know how good Oklahoma will be next season. I think it's going to be a marathon with this team. And within the next five years, I would not be surprised to see Oklahoma in that SEC championship game. But I don't know about next season because the SEC is going to be a gauntlet. And I think Oklahoma still has more learning to do to get to their full potential. But they are definitely trending up. Oklahoma returns 79% of production on defense, which is actually top eight in the country. So they really have a lot of returning pieces on that defense. I don't know if the defense was exactly where they wanted to be last season, but it was definitely a big step up for their defense in 2023 because Oklahoma went from allowing 29 points a game in 2022 to only allowing 22 points a game in 2023, which was top four in the Big 12. I know that they had some inconsistency on defense and gave up 45 points to TCU and also gave up 38 points to Kansas and Arizona, but despite those bad defensive performances, they were still solid on defense for a majority of the season. And that may not cut it in the SEC, but I can only assume that the defense is only going to get better because of everybody they return and the fact that Brent Venables is your head coach. Oklahoma brings in a big addition out of the transfer portal with edge rusher Caden Wallard joining the team. I don't know if he will start, but he was a four-star transfer from Miami, Ohio. But Oklahoma returns Billy Bowman Jr. in the secondary who had six interceptions last season. They also return leading tackler Danny Stutzman who had just over 100 tackles last season. He could do a bit of everything as he had two forced fumbles, three sacks, and an interception last season. They return sack leader Ethan Downs, and if he takes a step up under Brent Venables, I believe he could be a game changer because he only had four and a half sacks last season, and he could disrupt offenses in the SEC even more next season. I mean, the list is long, but there's a lot of top stars on this defense. Watch out for the potential breakout stars like Grayson Halton on the defensive line, but also Adepoju Adeborare on the defensive line. He was a five-star recruit out of high school, and he has size and length to create problems for SEC Offense Alliance in 2024, as he still does have a lot more time to grow and improve as a defensive end, and he will be heading into only his second college season this upcoming season. 
Oklahoma has had four back-to-back top 10 recruiting classes and Brent Vittables really recruits at a high level. Jackson Arnold was the top recruit for Oklahoma's 2023 recruiting class and I can't wait to see just how good Jackson Arnold can be. Oklahoma has had many great quarterbacks like Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, but they also recruited five-star quarterbacks Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams. And ultimately, those two quarterbacks didn't do much for Oklahoma. But I think it's a great sign that Brent Venables was able to pick up one of the best quarterback commits for Oklahoma and managed to keep him on the roster despite him sitting out his first season. Dylan Gabriel is gone and this is Jackson Arnold's team now. Players can always change their mind and enter the transfer portal and that's just how modern college football works and everybody has to adapt to that. But let me tell you, people better adapt to seeing Jackson Arnold on Saturdays because out of all the top rising quarterbacks in the country, Jackson Arnold may just be the most interesting out of all of them. And I definitely cannot wait for the start of next season. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.